In the world of diesel performance, a lot of people say that the 7.3 Power Stroke was the best engine that Ford ever used, and that the 6 liter Power Stroke is nothing but a boat anchor. It wasn't long after Ford released the 6 liter that a ton of common problems were uncovered and well documented. Even with the laundry list of problems, a lot of people compare the 7.3 and the 6 liter, so today we're going to discuss which one is better. As you may or may not know, Ford killed off the 7.3 due to emission standards changing. Being that the 7.3 started in 1994, it wasn't designed for modern emission systems. Now, the 6 liter was a lower displacement engine designed to work with modern emission systems. Now, Ford could have used the architect of the 7.3, but who knows if that would have actually worked. Throughout the life of the 7.3, Ford ended up updating it five different times, but it still ended up falling short compared to the competition. Initially, it did very well, but as the years went on, it just couldn't keep up with what the competition was offering in their truck. Now, there are a handful of things that made the 6 liter more efficient and more powerful, most notably the four valve heads. Other features such as the variable turbo allowed the 6 liter to just make more power out of the box compared to the 7.3. To save some time, I'll pop some stats up on the screen here for you to see. The biggest difference between these two engines, obviously, is the displacement. Now, due to the age of the 7.3, it was always stuck with a fixed geometry Garrett turbocharger. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing since a fixed geometry turbocharger can work really well if it's sized properly for the application, but in the case of the 7.3, the OEM Garrett turbocharger was a little bit laggy. Now that's not to say it's like some thousand horsepower super with tons of lag, but it wasn't that responsive. But if you were going to pick up an old truck which uses a 7.3, chances are that old turbo is pretty tired and you can upgrade to a modern turbocharger with modern features. The 6 liter on the other hand was the first power stroke engine to receive a variable geometry turbocharger. Now this gave the 6 liter tons of low end torque, really good throttle response, and it still made decent top end power. Now this worked by giving the exhaust housing electronically controlled veins which allowed it to effectively change the size of the exhaust housing to change the gas velocity. To put it simply, at low RPM the housing decreases its effective size and at high RPM it expands and increases its effective size. As you might have imagined, introducing an electronically controlled hydraulically actuated variable turbocharger did sacrifice some reliability. While this system is very interesting and very effective, it is significantly less reliable than a standard fixed geometry turbocharger. With how old both of these engines are, Realistically, you're much better off just upgrading to a modern turbocharger with modern features and modern technology behind it. In 1994, when the 7.3 was initially released, it featured a hydraulically activated, electronically controlled unit injector fuel system. This came at a time when most diesel engines were using mechanical injection, and the electronic injection gave the 7.3 a really big leg up on power and emissions. It also gave it the ability to be tuned through an ECU. 7.3 uses a gear-driven pump on the front of the engine located near the lifter valley, and it's known for being a very reliable system. Now, by the time the 6 liter rolled around, electronic injection systems were pretty much the norm. The 6 liter uses a similar electronic injection system, but instead of being at the front of the engine, it's located at the back. And unfortunately, being at the back and underneath the turbocharger, it's super hard to access. Accessibility wouldn't be a problem, except for the 6 liter's injection system is known for failing all the time. It's a very big and very expensive repair, and it's one of the downfalls of the 6 liter. Being that oil is used to actuate the fuel injection event of the HEUI injector, 7.3 injector body features an internal component component called a poppet valve. This valve is what allows high pressure oil to enter the injector and kickstart a chain of events that culminates in 21,000 psi worth of injection pressure leaving the injector nozzle. The electronic solenoid up top is what gets energized via the injector driver module when it's time to fire. The poppet valve is one of the biggest wear items on the 7.3 injectors but they are known to last at least 200,000 miles. The 6 liter fuel injector operates similarly to the 7.3 liter unit but the valve that allows high pressure oil to the injector body is referred as a spool valve. Tighter tolerances and a more advanced injection system allow the 6 liter to produce higher injection pressures and horsepower. Contaminants and dirty oil can really mess with the spool valve and it doesn't offer the same service life as the poppet valve does in the 7.3. As you probably know, connecting rods are one of the limiting factors in many high horsepower builds. Unfortunately, this is something that holds the 7.3 back from being a high horsepower engine in only some of the years. From 2001 to 2003, the 7.3 used metal powdered connecting rods, which are known to crack, break, bend, and just overall fail around 450 to 500 wheel horsepower. In the earlier 94 to 2000 engines, forged steel connecting rods were used and these are known for holding up to around 600 wheel horsepower. In the case of the 6 liter, you're going to run into head gasket issues way before you need to worry about the connecting rods. Thanks to the 6 liter being equipped with a bed plate and a better overall design, it's able to rev higher and handle more power on the stock bottom end, but like I mentioned, 
heads become an issue. The stock connecting rods are good for as much as 750 to 800 wheel horsepower and the valve train doesn't need to be upgraded much unless you're making some serious power compared to the 7.3 where stiffer valve springs and stronger push rods are essential when you start making big power. Now it's not a secret that the 6 liter has a laundry list of problems. Of all these problems, EGR related issues seem to be one of the most common issues. Realistically, the easiest way to solve the EGR issues is to just do an EGR delete, but depending on where you live, this might not be legal and your truck might not be able to pass emissions if your state has emissions testing. So tread lightly with EGR delete. Otherwise, regular maintenance and occasionally driving your truck really hard to get the EGRs hot is a good way to make sure that they last a long time. I know we covered a lot in this video, but there are a few key things you need to keep in mind. The 6 liter makes more power with just a tune, it revs higher, it has a more responsive turbocharger, a bed plate, a stronger bottom end, but it's prone to head gasket issues, EGR failure, cracked heads, broken turbochargers, and injection system issues. On the other hand, the 7.3 might not make as much power tuned, but it's still plenty to push the truck around. It has a more reliable turbocharger, better resale value, more reliable injection system, but it has a weaker bottom end, a weaker automatic transmission, no bed plate, and in stock form, it doesn't make much power. Which one is better really depends on what you're going for and what matters most to you. If reliability is key to you, the 7.3 is definitely the much better engine, but if you want to make a bunch of power on a stock box, bottom end, the 6 liter is also a great choice. It should be noted that most of these 6 liter issues that everyone talks about online can be cured with a bulletproof kit, which really makes the 7.3 a fantastic overall engine with almost no downsides. Let me know down in the comments which one you think is better. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.